And so, uh, what's the guy's name? Uh, they came out with the uh, lectins. Grundy, Grundy, yeah. We, my son had wrote a thing on that. I mean, they, they come up with this idea, lectins are no good, well, they're in plants, basically. And it was, oh, that's what the whole thing is all about. It's just, you know, lectins, don't eat the plants. You might get some lectins. It really is confusing the things. And, and this Dr. Grundy really had no publications in that area at all. So I see, I get really disturbed by an, the kind of books that are coming out tend to focus on one thing at a time, often with the effort to decrease or decrease the emphasis given to plants that Dr. Esselton, Dr. Ornish, Dr. McDougall, myself, a few others are talking about. If you've been following my newsletter, blog, YouTube channel, or if you've read my new book, The Plant Paradox, you know beans and nightshades are two of the worst things that you can eat. They're packed with tiny proteins called lectins. And remember, even when prepared correctly, beans and nightshades shouldn't be a huge part of your everyday diet. If you'd like, you can add some wild-caught seafood or pasture-raised meat. What's up, y'all? <laughs> You're gonna wanna see this. What we have here today is T. Colin Campbell, author of The China Study at the 2018 Real Truth About Health conference during a Q&A session, offering some passing criticism of Dr. Stephen Gundry of the Plant Paradox fame. If you like this video, make sure to hit subscribe so you can avoid making popular diet mistakes. Now, whether you're a fan of one man or the other, we have to ask from an objective perspective, what valid criticisms is Professor Campbell registering at Dr. Gundry? Luckily, Campbell and his son, a medical doctor, have published an article outlining an alarming number of citations in the Plant Paradox book where the references indisputably do not support the statements made by Dr. Gundry. Once you read through the list of misrepresented Plant Paradox references, documented in Campbell's article, do you think it's prudent to accept Gundry's health advice at face value? The article goes on to point out a number of other random inaccuracies and wild claims made in the plant paradox with no referencing at all. I think you'll have to decide what level of skepticism is necessary based on this information. But we'll come back to this article later because it points out some even more alarming dietary misinformation provided in the plant paradox. But first, I think we have to acknowledge Campbell's complaint that the basis of the plant paradox diet is lectin avoidance and the majority of healthy staple plant foods like whole grains, beans, and potatoes are excluded from the diet. And so. Uh, what's the guy's name? Uh, they came out with uh, lectins. Grundy, Grundy, yeah. We, my son had wrote a thing on that. I mean, they, they come up with this idea, lectins are no good, well, they're in plants, basically. And it was, oh, that's what the whole thing is all about. It's just, you know, lectins, don't eat the plants. You might get some lectins. It really is confusing the things. And, and this Dr. Grundy really had no publications in that area at all. So I see, I get really disturbed by an, the kind of books that are coming out tend to focus on one thing at a time, often with the effort to decrease or uh, decrease the emphasis given to plants that Dr. Esselton, Dr. Ornish, Dr. McDougall, myself, a few others are talking about. So it's kind of a, and they make some money on that oftentimes too. They make the book. Like my friend Dr. Uh, McDougall first said to me, or I, he's the first person I heard say this, people like to hear good things about their bad habits. What a market. Campbell's article rightfully points out that you can't get the majority of your calories from Jerusalem artichokes, arugula, and bok choy. <laughs> Look, no one is saying that eating lots of dark leafy greens is a bad thing. So it makes sense that kale would be dangerous given it's evolved into in an evolutionary war basically against those that try and eat it. Well, uh, at least no one who advocates a whole foods plant-based diet, but that's another story. Considering the list of approved plant foods on the plant paradox diet is mostly made up of specialty produce, 
non-grain noodles and energy bars, by default, you're going to be getting the majority of your calories from added fats like olive oil and, to be completely fair, yes, the high-fat whole plant foods like avocados, nuts, and seeds will be included, but the point I'm making is that without those starchy staple foods, refined oils will be a mainstay in your diet. Now, I've done several videos on the plant paradox, and I have not gotten any comments from people who are doing the plant paradox on a vegetarian or a vegan basis, even if it is kind of promoted as a sideshow within the book. And part of what's going on here is that even if he recommends you eat the expensive and impractical pastured meats and wild caught seafood as a, like a kind of a moderation thing, because of our culture and people coming from a Western dietary pattern, they're going to eat those foods on a regular basis anyways to maintain some level of familiarity with the eating pattern. If you've been following my newsletter, blog, YouTube channel, or if you've read my new book, The Plant Paradox, you know beans and nightshades are two of the worst things that you can eat. They're packed with tiny proteins called lectins. And remember, even when prepared correctly, beans and nightshades shouldn't be a huge part of your everyday diet. If you'd like, you can add some wild-caught seafood or pasture-raised meat. Again, by removing from your diet whole grains and beans as a staple, as well as large categories of fruits and vegetables from the plant kingdom, by default, you become more susceptible to accepting the reductionist line of reasoning that you can obtain proper nutrition from specialty produce, low-calorie leafy greens, supplements, olive oil, chocolate, and moderate intake of costly meat and fish fillets. When we look at the way Gundry presents dietary information to the public, we really can't ignore Campbell's remembrance of Dr. John McDougall's famous saying, people love to hear good things about their bad habits. So it's kind of a, and they make some money on that oftentimes too. They make the book. Like my friend Dr. Uh, McDougall first said to me, or I, he was the first time I heard say this, people like to hear good things about their bad habits. Quite a market. And then about two tablespoons of olive oil. And quite frankly, the more the better. And you know, sometimes I add a little extra cocoa powder or even a shot of espresso. Here I've got some really nice cold brew coffee. Let's put it in and have a mocha today. Oh, this is gonna be yummy. Oh, mocha freeze. So, give it a shot. In any case, make sure to keep high cacao chocolate as part of your regular diet. Not just because it's delicious, because it's great for you too. Oh, this is gonna be yummy. Oh, mocha freeze. <laughs> I'm sure, I'm sure that high fat chocolate olive oil coffee mocha smoothie is a tough sell. <laughs> but perhaps more alarming is how Dr. Gundry appears to be tacitly dissuading his readers from trying a whole foods plant-based diet, the likes of which he mentions Ornish and Esselstyn and the author of the China study, Colin Campbell, in his book. You have to understand that this is very subtle. Gundry makes erroneous claims about organic food being a requirement on a whole foods plant-based diet. He further attempts to implicitly turn people away from a plant-based diet by overstating the dropout rate on Esselstyn's small and intimate study using diet to reverse heart disease, which, by the way, now has well over 20 years of follow-up. This leaves me with the impression that he's attempting to win over any readers who might be marginally aware of the health benefits of a whole foods plant-based diet, whom he would rather persuade to try the Gundry plan by casting subtle shade at men like Campbell and Esselstyn and Ornish. Now, even though Dr. Gundry is very intelligent and nuanced about the way that he attempts to dissuade the readers of his book, from attempting a whole foods plant-based diet, 
You guys have to understand that I see this line of thinking quite a bit in the community that we've created here, where people will come on and say, you know, the Ornish diet, oh, 99% of people can't adhere to that diet, it's low fat diet, nobody can eat that way. <laughs> and, and remember, remember y'all, we're advocating a whole foods plant-based diet which has been clinically proven to reverse end-stage heart disease and prevent future cardiac events in Esselstyn's study. And Dr. Gundry is advocating a diet that's based on, what have, we shown, what have I shown you in this video? Unproven anecdotes, references that do not support his claims, and unsupported claims with no references. Hmm. So do you think Dr. Gundry is correct in asserting that lectins are the root cause of most all diseases? Or do you think it's possible that people benefit from a plant paradox style diet because they cut out cow's milk based dairy products and processed junk food? In any case, it's up to you to recognize what techniques of persuasion are used to win the votes you place with your food dollars. So it seems Dr. Gundry has not made a convincing argument that lectins as an entire class are hazardous. And Colin Campbell, the author of the China study and meritorious experimental biochemical researcher, believes it is extremely naive to assume that one or a few lectins among this complex class reflect the activities of the entire class. It's not just Colin Campbell who is warning the general public about this sensational fad diet called the plant paradox. We also have seen several other prominent public health advocates and doctors of varying backgrounds sound the alarm, including cardiologist Dr. Joel Kahn, nutritionfacts.org founder Dr. Michael Greger, Nutritarian diet advocate, Dr. Joel Furman. Bariatric surgeon, Dr. Garth Davis. And yes, even Dr. John McDougall. So if you want to avoid following unproven diets with spectacular unreferenced health claims and misrepresented citations, be sure to hit subscribe, turn on the notifications, and check out the other videos on this channel for more information. Red Pill Vegan, next.